Hey, what's up, VC? It's Steve again, Harmless Rebel, and this is a uh, kind of a miscellaneous vinyl update, stuff that doesn't fit into the uh, hard rock, heavy metal category, the country category, any of those. So, um, First up, this is kind of a tribute to Robert Z. Let's just listen for a second. So Robert's got all of these MoFi pressings, Mobile Fidelity Sound Labs uh, pressings of uh, uh, Bob Dylan's albums, and I don't think he's ever heard any because he never opens them. So uh, I ran across this copy for a really good price the other day and grabbed it. It was already opened, and uh, so here you go, Robert. This is what Bob Dylan sounds like uh, on Mobile Fidelity vinyl. So, uh, let me show you the gatefold since you've probably never seen it before. Some really nice pictures in the studio there. Really a great album. I believe this one came out last year. Let's see. And this one's number 2208. Yeah, this one came out in 2014. So. Just another quick... Here you go, Robert. Sorry, I can't help myself. Uh, I also picked up a copy of uh, Dylan's Greatest Hits. The poster was missing from this, but uh, it's otherwise in uh, mint condition. So. Uh, these next two I picked up at an antique mall. Uh, a band I just recently got into, um, just straight up 70s prog. Um, I've heard their later stuff in the 80s, and they, they sort of dabble in the, in the keyboards more, into that more AOR sound. Um, but this still has them in their, uh, that, that progressive sounding. Uh, but this is uh, Breathless from Camel. You can see it's corner clip, and it's got the uh, uh, DJ promo sticker on the back. And this one was 78, I think. Let's see. Yeah, that part's clipped off. I think one is one of these is 77 and one's 78, if I were, or 78 and 79. So that was 78, and then uh, this is, uh, I can see your house from here, and this is 79. I love this cover. Again, another DJ promo. Um, and I picked both of these up in an antique mall, and I mean they're in mint condition. I think I paid nine or ten bucks a piece. Another one that, uh, even though I have all of their uh, th their best albums anyway, um, I ran across this for cheap and grabbed it. Best of uh, Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. Um, this one I picked up for like three bucks. The vinyl's in mint condition. Um, usually I see this for ridiculous prices, but uh, sold a stole, or excuse me, sold a soul from uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan in Double Trouble. Just a classic album there. Uh, this I was amazed. Uh, you can still see the price. I got to pay two bucks for it. The vinyl's in mint condition. It's one of the only, uh, uh, other than Hell Freezes Over, it's the only Eagles album I didn't have. And this is uh, Eagles Live. And this was 70, oh, 1980 when this came out. So Really good live set, though. Um, these next two I haven't seen on vinyl in a long time, and I was really surprised to run across them. Um... First up is Anthology One from the Beatles, and I picked this up for twenty bucks in mint condition. I mean, the vinyl sounds beautiful. Um, this is actually my least favorite of the anthologies, and actually, it's funny. Um, I listen to Anthology all the time, but uh, you can see I actually prop my camera with two of the anthologies. That's number two and three that I prop it with. Um, one I don't own on CD because I honestly. Um, other than the Quarrymen song and some of the early live stuff, which I really like, the rest of it's okay for me. If you're not familiar with that anthology, it was the, uh, um, it, there's three anthologies. This is one, there's a two and three, and they were the soundtrack to basically the Beatles story. Uh, it was a BBC um, documentary, three-part documentary. And it was mostly, uh, they told the story, uh, but the cool thing was they told the story by using music that most people had never heard, meaning 
it was studio outtakes, it was uh, live performances. There, there's uh, almost all of the stuff on the anthology is stuff that's not on their, or, or, or not the actual, the same recordings that are on their main album. So it's very cool. And they were all double CD or triple vinyl, all three of them. So, um, and like I said, the, the Quarrymen, to get the Quarrymen on vinyl, um, I mean, that's some of the most expensive vinyl that there is. Um, so to have it on this anthology is really cool. But like I said, that is my least favorite. Um, that'll probably be the one I listen to the least. I don't even have that one on CD. Now, where I bought it, they also had Anthology 2, but for some reason, that one was scratched all to hell. Um, and then I had Anthology 3, which is by far my favorite of the three. Um, this is still sealed, and, and it won't remain that way. I'll open it, but uh, um, Anthology 2 and 3 are where it's at for me. And a lot of that just has to do with the fact that I'm more into the... the from uh, help forward so I'm more into the the later even helps kind of borderline uh, but I'm into that the, the later 60s uh, Beatles so another one I picked up uh, I really like this and this may surprise some people this is uh, she and him classics uh, and if you're not familiar with this this is uh, Zoe Deschanel the actor that's in uh, New Girl she was in uh, Tin Man I've been in a bunch of stuff. Uh, the sister of, of Bones, the lady that plays Bones, is I believe her name's Emily Deschanel. But uh, she's got a really classic voice that I really dig. And what I really like about this album is it's all standards. Um, and it just sounds really good. I'm not a fan of him when he sings, but his guitar is good. Uh, just a really nice uh, album, though. And if you're into the standards or if you're just into that classic female vocal, um, definitely worth checking out. Um, this next one is probably the least favorite by most people from this band, but uh, this is Zigzag Walk from uh, Fog Hat. Um, they completely changed their style. They went from that classic uh, 70s rock style, and this, they were kind of getting on that Americana bandwagon, that, uh, that, that second wave rockabilly. Um, there's, so there's songs on here where they're, you can tell they're going after that Stray Cat sound, and it's it's not bad. Don't take it the wrong way. Um, I actually like this album. Their take on that, that style is not bad. Um, it's just not what you expect from Foghead, you know? It, it was just such a drastic change from everybody else, and it just came off as them trying to jump on a bandwagon, you know? But uh, I, I still like that album. Um, this one, where was this one pressed at? I think this is a UK... No, this is a West German pressing of... Uh, nothing Matters and What If It Did from John Cougar Mellencamp. Um, I grew up on John Cougar. It's one of my dad's favorite artists. Um, so especially through... Oh, I'd say through the late 80s. I, I don't like any of the stuff, really. He's got a couple songs in the 90s, but... For the most part, it's albums from the 80s and the late 70s are what I listened to. Uh, this was one that I was missing, and the, I found the West German copy. It was like two bucks, so. Uh, so this next one was a really big disappointment for me, and I've, I've talked about this on Facebook. I don't think I've mentioned it on YouTube yet, but uh, uh, first off, I bought this by accident. So I was really excited to hear when that, that Rush was re-releasing all of their uh, vinyl. Um, there's a couple I'm missing and uh, that are kind of hard to, to find in good condition. Um, so I was really excited. And when I bought this, I couldn't remember if I needed uh, Caress of Steel or Fly By Night. I knew I was missing one, but I, and I didn't have my phone or my phone was dead, so I couldn't look up what I had on my Discogs. Um, so I took a gamble and I picked this one up. It was already, or no, this was sealed, but they had it on discount. Um, so I grabbed it. Um, now let me begin by saying the quality of the recording is amazing. Um, the uh, mastering, they did a really good job. As far as that goes, it sounds beautiful. The problem I have is the quality of the pressing. It sounds like shit. Um, I mean, it's horrible. Um, I've got I've got thrift store albums that are so scratched that you can there, there's no sheen left on them that sound better than this album and I'm not exaggerating it just sounds terrible um, now I've, I've heard other people say that they sound beautiful hey I wouldn't take the chance and, and here's here's where, why so I ran across this as well and this is one that I was missing um, it was a different store 
So I grabbed it. This one was already opened. This one goes for like 36, 37 bucks. I picked it up for like 22. Um, so I couldn't pass up the deal. I uh, put it on the record player. It sounds 10 times better than Caress does, but there's still a lot of noise. Um, there's no pops, but just that, that constant noise, it, it, it drives me crazy. This one at least, is at least uh, is, is listenable. Uh, Caress of Steel, I'll never put on the, and it sounds that bad, I'll never put it on there again. If I, if I could get my money back, I would. And that's kind of the downfall of buying new albums at stores as opposed to Amazon. Because the nice thing about Amazon, I've gotten albums that I've opened up and they've had little scratches or manufacturing defects. And Amazon will take it back and send you another one, no questions asked. Uh, whereas at the stores, most stores won't take back new vinyl. There's such a small margin on it um, that they, they can't afford to, to, to take back vinyl just because it doesn't sound good, you know. Uh, whereas most uh, most of the used stores I go to, you know, they pay little for their used records, and if you have a problem with it, you bring it back. They're real cool about it, you know. So um, another one that I picked up already opened. I picked this up for under twenty bucks. Is a new U2 album. Uh, not sure what's going on on the cover there. Uh, it's on, I believe it's yeah, white vinyl. I was really surprised by this album. You know, I was one of the people that was annoyed that they forced it on all of our iPods, all of our iPads, all of our iPhones, whatever. Uh, but that made me listen to it. I haven't liked anything from them since maybe 88. I think uh, uh, Octung Baby, is, is that was the start of the end for me. There were a couple songs I liked, but I didn't really like that album or anything after that. Um, I was really surprised by this. I really ended up liking this album. Um, and it, I would recommend it if you're a fan of U2. Um, so there you go. And it's called, what is it called? Songs of Innocence. Next up, this is another one I was really surprised to run across. Um, I love this band. Um, this is Mogwai. Hardcore will never die. I think I paid nine bucks for this. It's in mint condition. Um, I really like uh, post rock. There's there's not a whole lot of bands that I like because a lot of them kind of are copying Mogwai and a couple of other bands. Uh, but Mogwai is one that's always really stood out to me, and this album is is really a standout album from them as well. Next up, Link Ray Live. This one, too, is a uh, promo from Visa Records. I really love Link Ray. Um, I've always been a fan of his. Um, this was live in 80... Oh, live in 79 in Amsterdam. Really killer show. Uh, got the classics. Uh, he, he plays Blue Suede Shoes. He plays Ace of Spades. Um, Rumble, Shake, Rattle, and Roll. Money. Just a killer, killer live set from one of the, I mean, just one of the most amazing guitarists out there. I mean, the guy is a, just phenomenal. Uh, this one I picked up, I, you know, I couldn't pass on this, uh, a radio promo of Duke. Come on. I love this album. That The copy that I have wasn't in the best condition. So, um, so when I saw this, I jumped all over it. Unfortunately, Cindy wrote her name on there, but at least she wrote it on the, uh, the radio promo sticker and not on the record itself, not that it really matters, but uh, uh, this thing's in mint condition though, the vinyl is as well, and I'll never, I'm never going to pass up on a, a Genesis promo, uh, speak, sticking with Genesis, picked up a real nice copy of uh, Wind and Withering, I believe this was the first album I want to say this was the first one with Phil Collins on vocals. I could be wrong about that, though. I could just be making it up completely. Next up was uh, Big Generator from Yes. This is one I just put off buying. It, you know, it's, it's probably my least favorite Yes album that there is. Um, this one was just in such good condition that I, I, I couldn't pass up on it. The, the vinyl itself was mint, other than a little bit of ring wear up here. Um, you know, the, the jacket would be in mint. Um, and I think I paid three or four bucks for it. So that was more just kind of filling out the collection than anything. And then I also picked up a, a clean copy of uh, Drama. Uh, I've actually, a lot of these I've had for months. Uh, I just haven't had, uh, shown an update of miscellaneous stuff in quite a while. 
Um, this one I probably had for three or four months. I picked this up, uh, I want to say in December. Um, but it's just a lot cleaner copy than the one I had. So um, that's pretty much it. Let's listen to uh, a little bit of uh, Sir Bob for a few minutes here, just for Robert Z again, just so you can get the, the feeling. Your dogs run free while we. A little mobile fidelity for you. You know what? Just for you, Robert, uh, I'm, I'm setting up a new record or a, a new turntable. I picked the, I'm kind of upgrading my system by by leaps and bounds, really. Um, maybe I'll use this album as a comparison for you when I do the comparison of, of what a P mount sounds like compared to, to a. Uh, um, I can't think of what the, mount, the mount's called for the other turntables, but. Uh, um, to do when I do my before and after videos. How's that sound, Robert? You liking that? Maybe you should open yours so you can en enjoy it the way I'm enjoying it right now. Just saying. Take care, guys. Oh, uh, actually, before I go, uh, in the next day or two, I'll be posting up a 300 subs uh, contest. Um, I hit 300 subs uh, within the last few days. I'm at 302 or 303 now, something like that. Um, so I will be doing a contest for that, so look out for that. And then I uh, should have another Hard Rock and Heavy Metal come, uh, update coming up in the next few days as well. Um, the Judas Priest uh, Part 2 uh, will be out by next weekend. So um, take care, VC. Love you. Goodbye.